to recap, this is Tony and Julian. They met a few years ago, and once they got past that awkward shake hands or fist bump stage, they found they really enjoyed working together and opened a restaurant. They hired me to help them make money, and now they're learning how to cost food accurately. So far, we've talked about some of the basics and converted one of Julian's home recipes into one that is restaurant proof. We also discussed the difference in weighing food and measuring food and when to use each method. The purpose of this lesson is to learn where to find accurate pricing for each ingredient and costing those ingredients. Tony and Julian know what they need in general. Now let's create an overall list of all the ingredients needed. This will help compare pricing ingredients from the different purchase avenues. When you place your ingredients in a list, you start to find the items that are repeats. It is important to determine the quantity of each ingredient. Typically, the price of an ingredient decreases with the more that you buy. Here's the list of new ingredients for Tony and Julian's restaurant. With the ingredient list as their guide, Tony and Julian are able to start shopping. Well, they are able to start finding pricing on some items. So, how do you know how to price your dishes or even what the ingredients will cost? It actually isn't as daunting as you think it is to figure out the pricing of ingredients. We just need to start with the list. Knowing where to look is key. If Tony goes to the grocery store, those retail prices are far elevated from what they should be paying buying directly from a distributor. Wholesale stores are a bit less expensive, but they are still paying a premium. We just want to research what each ingredient might cost. The most accurate source of pricing is a food distributor from whom you will ultimately be purchasing. They will initially give you the highest price they can, from which you can always negotiate. More importantly, it gives you the most reasonable price you will pay for that item. When calculating a plate's cost, this is a wonderful place to start since the costing is accurate and has realistic room for improvement. Reading their guides may seem complicated, but focus simply on what you need, the price and quantity of the item. When it comes to fruits and vegetables, there are sellers that have easier access to these products and sell them cheaper. Often, calling some local produce vendors will result in a list of prices for all of the fruits and vegetables they sell. While these prices will fluctuate throughout the year, that fluctuation isn't much unless there is an extreme weather event. When you are unable to work with vendors or distributors, an online search can go a long way. Proper wording in your search engine is critical for real results. Example, if I Google beef cost, I get mostly prices at retail stores. If I Google wholesale beef prices per pound, results tend to show a mix of wholesale stores and organizations tracking current pricing of beef more in line with what you're looking for. Searching market pricing produces results for national pricing based on current trends. Again, the key here is not to fall into the trap of retail pricing in order to get a more accurate idea. Plus, it is a good tool later on for negotiating price with your vendors. When all else fails, you can check grocery stores or online retailers for pricing. Just keep in mind that these prices are grossly over what you could be paying. These grocery stores and online retailers 
often get the product from the same distributors you could be using otherwise, so you are almost at a triple markup. However, sometimes this is the only way to get a quick answer. Make yourself a note to revisit this item later and compare pricing. Now that you know how to find the pricing, it is important that your notes reflect everything that you found. Keep it simple for yourself. Always note everything so you can compare later. As you can see, some things are calculated differently and packaged differently. Now we can do some math. I personally prefer an Excel sheet for keeping track. It will evolve into my costing sheet, but use whatever works best for you. Here, you can see the comparison in price from each purchasing source and how it comes packaged. On this sheet, I have an added line that calculates the cost of each ingredient by a common measurement. Now we price each item in the measurement style that we will likely use throughout the recipes or life of the item. In other words, I will use onions in many ways. We are going to give onions a price that will translate to all recipes. For onions, I take the total price of the 50 pound sack and divide it by 50 to get a price per pound. For green peppers, the first vendor sells it by the bushel, which is approximately 20 pounds. The second vendor sells it by the pound. For the first vendor, I divide the 2375 by 20 pounds, resulting in a per pound price of $1.19. This is our ingredient cost. Practice researching price and calling some distributors. Plug the data into a worksheet and practice doing some of this math. In the next video, we will discuss costing each recipe.